Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this series making uh, a beginner application using Vue.js. So in the last video then we got Vuetify up and running. We can open an alert by clicking the, the button here and turn it off by clicking error. In this video I want to add the, miss, the other missing piece before we can start making the application proper and that's actually how we want to load our data. So what we're going to do in the application is we're effectively going to mimic loading a JSON API. Um, this, uh, if you're not if you're not uh, familiar with web applications, it's fairly most apps you see today load um, the data that you'll see, say a weather app or something, via an APA. They'll put they'll ask for www.getmyweatherdata.com forward slash today or something like this, and they'll get what's called a JSON object back. And inside this object, you'll have the, all, all the information you need to see to uh, display in your application. And that's what we're going to do in this video. I'm actually going to split this over a couple of videos because I don't like the videos going too long. And I've already tried a few times doing this one. It's always taken a long time. So I'm going to split this video. It's not very complicated, though. So to do this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use uh, JSON placeholder typical.com for this video as an example. It says here it's a fake online REST API for testing and prototyping and what it has is various APIs that you can call to get JSON, so JavaScript object notation objects back that you can display on your website. So for example if I click on the forward slash posts I get a list here of 100 objects. Each of those objects is a user with the user ID, the ID, title and body. So each of these objects is a post, sorry, with the user ID, the ID, the post and the title and the body just with some random text in that you can use to test your app and that's exactly what we're going to do. If you're not familiar with JSON I recommend you go and Google and have a quick look but essentially it's like it was well, JavaScript object notations very similar to JavaScript objects there's a certain syntax rules for it but basically if I look on users here I get a list of 10 users here I've got one user as an object here I've got the name of the user the username the email then I've got the address which is another object inside here where I've got the street the suite the city I've got the geolocation which is another object with the lat and the long essentially this is a, a restful JSON API you do www dot or um, JSON placeholder dot typico dot com for slash users and it will return you this list and we can use uh, an extension to view to be able to understand this list and actually make that a list of objects inside our JavaScript that we can then show in our web page. That's the first piece we'll need. The second piece we'll need is something called view resource. I'm on github.com forward slash page kit forward slash view resource. We could do the API calling using pure jQuery uh, Ajax, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do it properly and use view. And we can use view resource, which is actually, I think, an official extension package for view. Um, you can ex actually install it using npm. And um, we're going to do it a little bit quicker. We're going to use this script tag here um, to uh, either download it if you want, or I'm just going to access it directly via this script tab here. And like I said, we'll do this over a couple of videos to so not keep the video uh, too long. So the first thing I want to do then is I actually want to get view resource. So down the uh, first page here in the CDN section here, I'm just going to copy the script tag. I'm going to go into my code, my HTML, and just below down the bottom, just below the Vuetify.js, I'm going to paste in that script tag. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete off two of the buttons and I'm going to change the primary button to load data so we're actually going to load some data and I'm going to leave the show alert equals true for now and just refresh the site check we haven't got any silly errors or anything that our buttons have disappeared and that we should be loading uh, view resource okay because there's no error appeared or anything so that looks all all right the next thing I want to do is I want to go into scripts.js uh, and I actually want to start loading or calling our API. So in our case, we're going to call this one here, jsonplaceholder.typico.com forward slash posts. Now, there's already an example straight away of how to use view resource here. I'm actually going to go to documentation, HTTP request response and do it in a little bit more of a, a broken down clear way. Inside methods here, you can see there are, you can either do your HTTP request using a global view object or in a view instance. And this is the one that we're going to use here, like this. We're going to get from a URL. We won't put any options in and we'll have then a function defined for where everything was OK and a function defined for everything was not OK, the error. And that's really all you need to do. So I'm going to just copy uh, this line here. I'm going to go back into my code and now underneath data I'm going to add a new section called methods and we've covered methods uh, already and inside methods then I'm going to make a new method called load API well I would if I could spell anyway a load API and here then this will be a function 
uh, with the brackets, curly brackets. Still not used to my keyboard. And inside here, what we're going to do then is we're going to uh, paste in this line from Beautify and we're going to do our HTTP GET request. Now, of course, the first thing we need to do is replace some URL with the actual URL that we want to request. So I'm going to take this URL here paste this URL in like so. We don't need to give any options, everything's okay as it is. And now you see that we've got, I'm just gonna make this, there's still the dot on the end here, a success callback and an error callback. And we still need then to define both of those. So I'm going to leave the names as they were in the example here. You could change these names, of course, if you wanted to. Uh, this is also then a function. And what we get provided automatically inside this function is we get a response. And then I'm just going to copy and paste this. And here we have our response. Now there's one thing here, we have to remember that these functions that I've got here, these callbacks are actually part of my view object. So I need to put the this in front of these. And here what I'm gonna do just for, just for now is we're just going to log to the console our response so we can see actually what's been going on. So I'm just going to put response and then response like so. And I'll put the same thing, exactly the same thing inside the error callback. And then just so we know that which one has been used, let's put the name of the function in then as well here. And that's all we need to do then, hopefully, to load our API. So if I now go back onto our website here then, and I'm now going to, ah, oh, there's one more thing I've forgotten to do actually, which I'd like to do before we go there. I'd like to go into index.html and just take this pre, uh, cut it away from there and put it inside the vapp tag like so with our data. And then I'll go back to the website, refresh again. And now I'm gonna click load data and hopefully in the console, we'll actually get our data loaded, which we haven't and we haven't because I've forgotten. And I'm sure you've realized inside the index HTML to actually change the button press to instead of put show alert equals true to actually call our load API function like so. So I'm going to go back into here, refresh again, and click the load data button. And you can see now that we've got the success callback and our response object. So let's expand this a little bit and have a look exactly what our response object has. And it has a lot of information. Uh, we've got uh, OK is true, the state is 200, this could be 404 in case of an error, the URL that it came from, uh, some data, and in the data you see we've got our array, so our list of 100 objects, and those 100 objects are the objects we looked at inside our API here with user ID title, etc., one by one. So our application is read in, um, this response and this resp response contains some data that we'll later on want to be able to display. So the last thing I want to look at then is what happens if it goes wrong. So let's have a look at the error then. So let's just put uh, posts, a URL that doesn't exist, ERER -E -R on the end of there, save that, go back to our site, just refresh and now click load data. And now we've got a response and now we've got a 404. Okay is false and then our data here is actually empty, there's nothing inside there. So when you're building your applications and calling an API, it's always good to put something in, an error message or an alert that appears on the page saying there was an error loading the data. And in fact, later on, this is something that we will do probably in the next video. Okay then, so that's just about it for this video. Just to recap, because I think I explained things a little bit quickly. So we've taken our view resource script and put it in here so we can use view resource. Online inside view resource in the documentation section, there's an explanation um, of how to use it to use an HTTP GET. You can also use a post as well. There's all the details here of the various options you can give as well and what comes back with the responses, etc. You can read about all that yourself. But essentially we used this one here without any options in a view instance to get from a URL our API data. Our API data we use json placeholder.tipicode.com, which gave us in forward, using forward slash posts, it gives us some posts, some imaginary posts by some users, a list of a hundred objects with some random text and some details inside. And what we did then was inside our scripts, we created a method called load API, which we hooked up to our load data button calling load API. And when this was clicked, it used view resource to get the data from uh, posts. I'll remove the ERER -ER for now from there so it actually works. And then 
If everything was okay, call the success callback function, automatically sending the response to it. And if things weren't okay, call the error callback function and then logged the response to the console, which we saw with the 200 response and the 404 response here. So that's very, very simple actually. It's very, very little code and very easy way to be able to inside view, call an API and load your data. So I hope that's made some sense. If it hasn't, please post a comment. It's been a bit of a delay since the last video because um, I've had a lot of work and I've actually unfortunately had flu. Um, uh, hopefully I'll get back to the videos a bit more regularly. Um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, any questions or doubts, please post a comment and see you in the next one.